it. We got the evidence. And now we run. Stop. Morgan, behold the terror which you have unleashed. <laughs> Why don't we just run? Just because a dude says stop, you should not stop. Hello guys, and welcome back to some more uh, Resident Evil revelations. So we're gonna have to deal with some uh, pretty strong enemies, I suppose. Because they killed all FPC members or something like that. I don't know what they are, though. We good? I can scan it, I suppose. Why not? What do you mean, target not found? It's right here. <laughs> it's like, target not found. Sorry. Wouldn't the best option just be to flood the whole ship? Then come in here afterwards? Unless they can breathe underwater, which they might be able to, based on what we've seen. Oh my god. Did this suddenly turn spooky? Dante Allegri la Divina Commedia, an offering to the dead. A pass has been underlined. Howl the rain may make it. Uh, there's something written at the edge of the page, just like the handwriting. Those who offer their lives to the doctrine forever walk the path with the great Jack Norman. Oh, it's suddenly dark. Jack Norman was the head of Veltro. And he has the video we can use to nail Lansdale. They're gonna comment how he is probably a boss monster or something? I guess not, why would you? Ooh, charge shot too. Let's see, uh, so this is doo -doo -doo -doo. charge shot, fire rate, critical, ups critical hit rate by 30%. I mean, sure, let's go with that instead. Uh, damage is good, charge shot is fine, no charge shot anymore though. Uh, this could probably use a charge shot in all honesty. If I can charge shot this one, that could also be good. Fire rate, fire rate too. Oh, it's the same. Damage is pretty high too. T 
Seems like I might have missed a couple of things, but that's okay. A weapon at the top of its class when it comes to power. Yes, but uh, what is it counted as? Just a normal gun? And does this count with the same ammo as the rifles? Because they have the exact same, right? I mean, it looks like it. Okay, we'll try with charge shot on that one. Wait, didn't I give charge shot two? I did. Five damage, three damage. Put in the fight on this one. There we go. And now I'm extra get up, of course. Um, hello there. Alepe. Can we speak? Morgan! Morgan Lansdale! How dare you cross Feltro! Morgan, this is what you seek, is it not? <laughs> Indeed, this little machine contains the truth. Oh, the truth needed to bring down your entire charade. I'll just take that if you don't mind. No? Come, come on. Come on, please pick it up. Thank you. This is it. We got the evidence. And now we run. Stop. Morgan, behold the terror which you have unleashed. Why don't we just run? Just because a dude says stop, you should not stop. Great. I, I was just gonna. Okay. <laughs> Very video gamey, but it's okay. I, I do prefer logic, but I mean, it's okay to be video gamey. It's just if you like that too much, it, it's just a bit weird. Norman, stop! Morgan isn't here! It's no use. He's gone over the edge. And you're big and strong. I need to get up. I don't think he's in the mood to say goodbye. So do I just straight up hit your heart whenever you do that? Oh 
Okay, you can just go ahead and do that now. What? Wait, what? Him, I guess. Oh, uh, excuse me. You know you do a lot of damage. That's that's for sure. But it doesn't mean I. How is that hitting me? <laughs> Keep your head in the game. My head is indeed in the game. What? Again? There's no way I can prevent that, is there? Whoops. Oh, reloading. <laughs> Great timing. Well, that was a bit too late, I suppose. So one of them is the one I just shoot at that moment. Come on, all right. I don't know why he's just targeting me. I feel a bit. Uh, I, I can't because he's blocking his heart when he does that. Unless I straight up run into him when he does that. Which I don't think I want to do. There we go. Happy now. Well, wrong, wrong person. See, this is a problem there. Oh well. Um, do you have any more health somewhere? No? Of course not. Oh wait, there's health over here. Quickly, 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 quickly. Yeah, I thought it was you. Ow, could you stop swapping attack pattern? That'd be great, thank you. What? You should have been stunned there. Yeah, it didn't really work, did it? <laughs> I hope I at least get my gun back. Cause this time I know not to waste the ammo. What? The we need the loser. I don't think he's in the mood to say goodbye. Okay, are you gonna... I can't see now! But never have I ever been able to see. I was about to say, if that hit me, I would be super sad. I need to reload. How is that hitting me? <laughs> Just stop. All right, big guy. So the one that shoots like purple gas out of the mouth is the right one. That's not you. That's this one. Uh oh, there's another one. <laughs> I didn't see the second one. Uh, 
Uh, where's the... Oh, that's the wrong dude. I need to swap whip into my pistol, I think. Or my shotgun, maybe? Alright, purple, 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 you. But why did she dodge? <laughs> Oh, so he doesn't get stunned. He doesn't do enough damage to stun him, is that it? But that's not good. Yeah. Can I, like, straight up change weapon mid fight? I can. Okay, so I need something that can stun. I mean, I guess I kind of need this one then, since it's faster shooting, right? Sniper also makes sense. The pistol does not, I guess. Uh, where's the other one? Oh, there he is. Oh boy. Okay, still got you. At least they're a bit generous when it comes to that one. You. Oh boy. Ow. Boy, can I please, uh... Oh god, I was reloading. Oh really? Out of ammo now? Still can't hit me if I go too far away from you when you do that. Didn't even see him properly. I don't know if the bag is the weakest point or if it's the front, because the bag is glowing. Oh boy. Oh god. Oh my goodness. One is fake, is it not? Oh, did I get him? how Morgan treats his friends. I hope he finds more comfort in death than he did in life. The mean 
means of dispersion. The cruise ship is equipped with a UAV. That is your delivery system. Very well. Now show me the goods. Bonafide tea abyss. No vaccine? Not yet. Yes, of course. A little bit of this could turn a city inside out. I think we're done. I'll be on my way. Who would have thought, yes? That the lowly terrorists would receive a helping hand from the venerable commissioner of the FBC. As you can see, it's not likely you'll be wriggling out of this one. I seem to have underestimated the BSAA, and perhaps you as well. We found this in the off-limits area near Terra Grigia. We're done analyzing it, so you can have it back. Director O'Brien, surely you understand our dilemma. Without the Terra Grigia panic, the ignorant masses would be unaware of the threat that lies before them. Yes, you may in fact be correct. No one has the right to detain me. The world required my guidance. It was all for the greater good. You're only fooling yourself. You said yourself, abandon hope, all ye who enter here. But I'm not Dante, and you're not Virgilius. Morgan Lansdale. You are hereby relieved of your position as FBC Commissioner. And I'm placing you under arrest on suspicion of conspiring with Veltro in the planning and execution of the Terra Grigia Panic. With all due respect, Director O'Brien, the BSAA is making a huge mistake. Where have I heard that before? Okay, episode 12 done. Maybe there's a 13? Or is it just epilogue? We can finally reveal what happened at Terra Grigia. Yeah, but the cost was high. The BSAA will have to be overhauled. The storm is gone now, but how long will it last? After his arrest, the FPC would dissolve with the majority of its agents and resources transferred to the BSAA. Great. The BSAA would then be reformed into an anti under the auspices of the United Nations, okay. But those two are alive, huh? Did anyone really die? Keith Lomley is now a leading figure at the BSS, uh, BSAA's East African branch due to his accomplishments at Valcone in Mucky. Quint Ketchman, on the other hand, continues to refuse promotion to any leadership position, but he still works at BSSA, or BSAA's main headquarters in the Andy department. And he's alive too. How? How is Parker alive? Parker was found adrift offshore of the Republic of Malta in the Mediterranean Sea and was rescued. Are you kidding me? 
After a month of medical treatment, Parker returned to his position as a special operations agent for BSAA's main headquarters. There's no way he would have survived that. Come on. Clive O'Brien decided to take responsibility for his actions and step down from his position as head of the BSAA. He is currently an advisor to the BSAA and is also writing a detective novel from the comfort of his own home. And as for Jill Valentine and Chris Redfield, they have no idea what horrific fate awaits them. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, so th that's that's the game. I mean, I'm a bit disappointed in the ending. I, I really am. So everyone survived in the end is pretty much what we're going with. I mean, I, I wish I wish there were consequences to to this game. Uh, it's not that I dislike the story. I actually I do dislike the end of the story. The beginning was kind of good. Um, it seems to have conspiracies things going on. Um, you, you checking out different things. They had the story kind of focused in a way where everything kind of fit together but then all of a sudden they added this blood twist and now all you have diverging diverging like story lines obvious betrayals um weird reveals and kind of gameplay things that don't really make sense with uh, some other stuff as an example Parker, how the heck did he survive he fell into fire and everything and if that was supposed to take effect after, how did he land and how did the other guy find him? Like, that makes no sense. There's no se How did he get down to where Jill and Chris was in the first place? He should be dead. He should, not, he should die on the bridge, bleed out before the ship exploded. That would have been an honorable death. He would have died because he made a mistake. Instead, he gets another chance. And I'm just very disappointed about that. Like, I, uh, consequences are essential to making a story feel like it has meaning to, to make it feel like it makes sense you know to make it feel like you can't just do whatever and get away with it actions have consequences it is an important thing in a story that if someone misses up they don't just come back to life again because they're dead or that they came into a life-threatening situation and just suddenly teleported out of it it would make sense if you had magic or anything but in this game it is set in real life an alternate universe, technically, with a different corporation messing around with bio-terrorism, uh, I guess you can call it. Or bio-organisms that they're then making a virus out of. You can't just suddenly invent teleportation. It's it's not... Uh, no. <laughs> Especially off-screen, too. All you had to do was show a little thing of him going down there. But even then, it wouldn't make sense because he was shut and he couldn't really move. Which is why he stayed up there. Same thing with Jessica, it was obvious she shot the guy because she was trying to, like, hide the actual secrets. But... Uh, it, it, the guy was still second-guessing the, the, the red-haired dude. So I'm, I'm a very disappointed in this story about the ending. Uh, it had me up until the midpoint, and then it started going downhill from there. And so I wouldn't say the story is that great. I will say the environment is pretty good, though. No real loading screens, except for the elevators, where you can feel their loading screens, but you can still walk around and interact, and you get to stutter. Um, but, but ultimately, I, I think this story was okay, if nothing else. Uh, it it kind of it was more of an add-on to the actual environments they created, and the maps, and the walking around, and the characters. The characters were certainly the highlight. I liked all the characters, except the two dudes who uh, were at the airport. <laughs> Don't like those guys. And, and Jessica's character I didn't like either because she was straight up just one of those girls that kept talking about guys and, and, and wanted to date and everything. And I'm just like, I'm not interested. It, it's a boring character thing. And they have this stereotype in almost any movie and stuff. So I wasn't the biggest fan of the character, like some of the characters, but Chris, Jill, and um, 
O'Brien's characters were cool. Uh, let's take a look at this before I continue. Let me guess, Jessica. Almost too easy, wasn't it? The company let them take Morgan out with the trash. Tough world. You file the report on this. By the way, why save Parker? I have my reasons. The BSAA isn't as useless as I thought. Things could really heat up. Indeed. The fun's just getting started. So he is a bad guy in the end? I mean, all right, uh, <laughs> sure. I wait. What is this hydro for campaign use? Now I'm just, I'm just, I'm just gonna skip this. Then I'm gonna keep talking about the game. Um, but yeah, I love the level design. Uh, I think it, it's cool how they um made the level design match the ship. Like you look at the map, right? And all the rooms are angled, so it makes sense. This is inside a big ship, and they try to sell the idea that it's a big ship, but in reality. There's no big ship the levels are inside of. It's kind of just rooms mixed together where you kind of get visuals when you look out the windows. So I like how they try to sell the idea of the ship and everything. I really love that whole aspect. It, it was very well done. The level design, the idea of the levels. Uh, I, I wish there were more, like... I don't like killing a constant amount of enemies, you know? I don't, I don't like respawning enemies, but this game has to use that because it's designed around it. So I'm a little bit sad about that. I didn't really... I I mean, I guess it's just part of the identity of Resident Evil, right? Where you go to one area, one room, and then you fight some enemies and go to the next room. And then you continue with that loop, and then you continue doing the same thing there. And shoot enemies or run away from enemies. Uh, both of those kind of work. You go into another room for some reason, and uh, there are no enemies there. Or oh, oh, the enemies can't follow you to the next room because it loads the next area when you do that. It's also a way to keep the performance pretty well um, adjusted, I would say. So so it's probably well, well, very performance friendly, which is why this game performed but smooth. It came out in 2012, at least this version did or whatever. I, uh, I didn't really look too much into it. Um, and it managed to uh, to do pretty well. Um, whether it was performance and, and the story and the uh, the level design, I do think they did that pretty well overall. I wouldn't say it is... <laughs> it's probably not going to be the best Resident Evil, because I've seen some stuff in the newer ones that are just way better. Because uh, the guns like punish, the sound design... I mean, the sound design itself wasn't bad, but it needed a little bit more oomph to it. Like, the sound sounded like... It sounded like the audio needed a little bit more of a, a, a second, like, a good, true little quality control. Uh, where where the, the audio seems a little bit less muffled and more more crisp, if you get what I mean. A little bit more loud, uh, a little bit more, a little bit less controlled. Like, everything felt too under control. It's, it's hard to explain, but that, that's what I felt about the audio in the game. The music was pretty good, though. I think it fit pretty well in. Uh, missed anything else? I mean, bugs. I did I count any bugs? I do not think I encountered any bugs whatsoever, like at all. Did I? Wait. No, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, there were times when I got hit when I don't think I really should have, and of course there were gameplay re things. That, but that, that's not that's not a bug. That's just no no. I don't think there were any bugs. Uh, if there were, I think I would remember them. Uh, the game is six hours long too, by the way, according to what I can see there. So six hour long game. Not this longest game. Uh, I got this game for free at some point. Whenever they just, like, they, they gave it out for free at some point and I picked it up. And that's kind of how I got my hands on this game. So technically, I don't really, I can't really complain much about the game time. Uh, and what this whole package is, because I got it for free and it's hard to judge a free game. 
but if I have to judge it, I would probably say the the value of this game would be um, either fifteen euros or, or twenty euros. Um, I, I would say about that much uh, if you want to pay for the game and if you see it on sale. I would say 15 or 20 euros, depending on, on your budget, I would say. Uh, it is, it's not a big package. It's not very long. It is content rich though, uh, which is why I would personally recommend buying it for 20. Uh, it's pretty content rich. It has a lot of lot going for it. The areas are again, very well designed. The gunplay, uh, I would not recommend playing with controllers simply because uh, the game's dead zone I, I don't know if I should adjust with Steam's actual dead zones, but I know for a fact that Steam is not the issue here. Uh, but maybe if I made the dead zone small on Steam, it would transit into the game. All I know is that I'm using Steam's thing. I uh, I am also I also tried not using the Steam's thing, and the dead zone is the same. So uh, this seems like the game is kind of locking the dead zone. But I'm using a PlayStation 5 controller uh, and mimicking an Xbox controller with it, and uh, it seems like the dead zone. It's like half of the thumbstick, which means that you have half of the thumbstick doesn't do anything when you try to walk forwards and backwards and, and, and look with it. Uh, and then the other half is kind of super fast. Like, like that's why I had a hard time controlling how to shoot, because the dead zone was like in the middle of the whole thumbstick. If you try to go all the way to the right, you have to go pretty much 50% oh, out there, and then the, the next 50% kind of controls the speed, and it just kind of swooshes all the way over there. So I don't know why they locked the dead zone in this game. It's very hard to control the aiming with that. Probably a, an effect of this being made for the... I don't I don't know if it was 3DS or whatever, but it was a, a handheld console, handheld console, handheld like machine. Uh, so I think that's a consequence of that. I, I don't think they, uh, they really thought too much about it when they ported it over and thought, oh, someone with a controller can probably like... They, they don't care about the dead zone, but I definitely did because it was super hard to control the, the aiming uh, with that. I would also have more game options. Uh, there weren't a lot of game options in the game uh, for visuals, like film grain and stuff like that. It doesn't have any of those, I don't, I don't think. I don't know if I had a lot of effects that I couldn't turn off. Like, the thing is, right, I didn't notice anything too crazy, so I don't know if they had any of those effects. But if they did, I would have loved to have the ability to turn them off. Uh, like, the, I know there were film grain in the cutscenes, and I really wanted to turn that off because it made everything feel grey and kind of 2010-ish, you know? Where they had this weird grey filter over every single game that just kind of killed all the colors. To make everything feel a bit dystopian. I don't know why every single game did that, but they did. Uh, but, but yeah, it's it's pretty decent. A pretty decent game. Uh, worth 20 euros to me personally. Probably 15 if, if you care too much. If, if you, if you uh, value time over like content, probably uh, 15. Uh, unless you, you really believe the whole time thing where time equals money uh, and then you probably want it for 10 or something uh, for me I would say 6 hours personally is, is very little to me so the price certainly has to match that time if it's 8 hours that's where I'm like okay that, that is worth 20 personally to me if it is 12 hours then the price can go up to 30 and then after that, the, the time kind of doesn't mean anything to me because I don't want to dedicate 50 hours to a game all the time. But I also don't want to go buy every single game for 70 dollars or 70 euros. That is um, that is even below 12. So it's a nice balance you kind of have to find yourself what you are willing to spend money on and what you're willing to uh, focus on when it comes to video games. That's why I have this graph on the screen that I forgot to say bam for but i guess i'll just put it on whenever i edit this video uh, and it kind of shows the different aspects you can focus on uh, i will say though that this game was pretty fun i i wouldn't i wouldn't say it was super fun uh, i would also say it was challenging and the controls are a bit rough not in the aspect of like it, it it's broken or anything but the controls felt rough because they're designed around you being able to like dodge enemies and then you can't sprint you can't do any of these things i would expect to do in any other game and because i haven't really played any resident evil games before it felt kind of weird not being able to sprint or anything but that's part of the gameplay design and i can see why they did it that way but i don't like how they make an enemy chase you that's faster than you or at least that is like slightly slower than you 
and you kind of have to continue to avoid that, especially when uh, you don't have a dodge button. A dodge button, and I, and I don't mean the dodge they have in the game where you have to like time the thing and then move si forwards and back. Uh, I mean an actual dodge button where they jump to the side or, or just kind of roll sideways. Uh, something like that would have been very great for those charge attacks enemies had. You kind of just had to kind of try to turn and then run. Like like normally, like the whole normal walking, running thing. Maybe it's called it jogging. And uh, I got hit more than I would like to. Even though I saw the enemy attack coming, I just simply didn't have enough time with the slow jogging that the character does to really avoid that attack all the time. Um, but, but mouse, by the way, controls better with aiming. Whoops. Uh, I would say personally, anyway. Because they didn't mean to do that. Um, so I would probably recommend playing with a con uh, another controller uh, with a mouse. Or if you can fix it, there's an issue somehow, then doing that would also probably help. But the game certainly does feel a bit old, and it kind of follows a very tight formula that is, I guess, the same as the first Resident Evil game, just in third person. And in, I don't know if there's anything else I really gotta focus on except that I mean the graphics they they look 2010. I I, I don't think they look too impressive, but I don't think they look bad either. It's gonna look like they, they look like that time when a lot of games came out. It looks like Gears of War um, remaster, whatever that game is. So I think it was came out. I don't know when it came out, but it looks like that game. It looks like a lot of games coming out 2012, Black Ops 2, um, like Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Probably more games, but that I'm not mentioning because I can't think of them right now. Probably think of it more later on if I really feel like it, but... Anyway, um... Yeah, I don't think I have much more to say. Uh, I, I, I just enjoyed the game. Uh, and again, I would say it's worth 15 euros if you, um... If you really want the experience this game brings. As long as it's a one-time purchase and you d and, and don't expect co-op to work, I'm very disappointed the co-op does not work for this game. It's kind of a staple of the Resident Evil, like, before they rebooted the city or they remade the, the games. Um, almost every single game from a certain point uh, was co-op until Resident Evil 7, I think, and then they kind of made it single player again. And it helps it helps the spook factor, right? But making a game co-op, where you have a partner at all times as an AI, is kind of a given. So it would have been great if they did that with this game too. But Revelations 2, I've heard, does have co-op. Uh, I researched it by accident while trying to figure out if this game had co-op at the beginning. And it seems like Revelations 2 indeed does have it. So that could be fun to try out with Hero, maybe, if she ever wants to. Um, I could also... I also have Resident Evil 5, so I can play that one as well. If you guys are interested, um, you can leave in the comment section uh, what game you'd like me to play next. And uh, let me know what you guys thought of the game. Did you think this game is, is worth 15 euros? Is it worth 10 euros to you? Uh, is six hours too short? Is it perfectly fine and you can just deal with it and, and it's still worth the money? Because like, think, think about it, right? You, you can buy things you can eat in a day for 15 euros. But a game like this lasts forever. So in my opinion, 15 euros is certainly worth it. But maybe to you it's not. And that's perfectly fine. No one ever says it, it, one is, is right and the other one is not. It's simply your own preference. I'm just gonna double check something. I mean, at least they have the basics here, right? They have anti-aliasing, they have frame rate, they have vertical synchronization, the refresh rate, window setting, and screen resolution. I mean, they have the bare minimum. I'll give them that. Uh, motion blur you can turn off, shadow quality is high, and sex quality is highest. And I, I will say this, though. Uh, the shadow quality and the texture quality, they're already a bit outdated. But... Again, that is perfectly fine, because maybe one day they can up the texture quality and make a remaster of this game. And um, I think that would be uh, kind of good of them to do um, in the future. So for now, this this product is perfectly fine as it is. Don't have any issues with it. Uh, maybe make the audio a little bit louder, because you can't even put it above... Like It's not a certain level, because... When I played the game... I had to up the volume by 10 decibels in post for you guys to actually hear the game properly because it's so quiet. Usually games are super loud for me 
uh, at this level when I mix everything out. But this game is so quiet. And it's like an old game thing. Uh, but it still would be kind of nice to, to be able to do that, you know? In any case, I think I've said everything that needs to be said. I enjoyed it. It is a... Uh... I mean, when it came out, I'd probably have given it a 6 out of 10. Or even a 7 out of 10 if I felt nice. But we are now in 2024. And uh, while I love the level design, there are so many good games out there. Like, there, there really are good games out there. So the scale of, of the, the rating system has kind of been bumped up a bit. Uh, so I'm 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 gonna have to give it like a five out of ten. I I didn't love this story. I I, I liked the idea of the game. I like what they tried to do with the game, but the fact that it's six uh six hours, uh and the whole idea with the controls that f it just feels a bit outdated at this point is what I'm trying to say. I would love to see them remake this game and maybe then I could bump it up to seven or even six out of ten. Uh, or, well, that's probably put that opposite, 6 or 7 out of 10. Uh, but but as the game, as it is right now, without co-op, uh, well, it has raid mode co-op, technically, so, so let me just bring that out of the way. Raid mode is co-op for this game, but it's kind of meh co-op thingy, because it's, like, it's just a cooperative mode where you fight enemies on varying difficulty. It's because it lacks some features other the games also have, it's just a bit it's a bit weird i would recommend this game but for the low price of 10 or 15 or 20 euros if you really feel generous you give them 20 euros but at this point it is pretty outdated and uh, it lacks a lot of quality of life things that we have today but i don't think it's bad so so don't, don't go thinking that it's bad or anything. I, I just think that it is just not worth more than 15 or 20 euros. <laughs> Myself. And only 20 if you feel generous. Otherwise, it's just straight up 15. Like I said, uh, leave your opinion in the comment section. Do, do you like this type of games? Is this worth more to you? Uh, this is a unique experience to me. I really enjoyed the design in this game. The whole package had me a bit... All over the place though but the actual design itself of this game i really really liked especially the environmental design where this had kind of had rooms you walked into and then uh, you saw new enemies or new things and then you, they reuse the same areas which is perfectly fine and then you go back again and you can open up a new door i like that aspect it's a, it's a some old school level design but it's old school level design that i kind of miss in today's games where it's always open world or super linear design and it's just nice to play something that tries to be a little bit more straightforward with you and, and not say, oh, over here we have this content and over here we have this content. But instead they block stuff off and say, you can't go here yet, you come back later. And, and you bring this thing you get later then. And I'm like, wow, okay, I guess I'm going to come back to this area, then I can go back and fetch whatever is in there. And then I can solve some kind of puzzle. And it's feel, it feels more rewarding stumbling upon something uh, like uh, like the uh, room where you see a shotgun and then that shotgun is marked after you stumble across it same with the doors they're marked as red after you try to open them I, I just like it when games do that and it's super nice when they do that it's 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 awesome i really enjoy it when um, but they're not given to you but they're shown to you after you find them you know like you remember where it is as an example i like it when it tries to follow logic you know you don't know where something is until you find it, and when you find it, you know where it is, you know it's there. And then the map marker and the quest stuff can help you figure out what it is. A little bit how if you find a code, uh, sometimes the game gives you like a piece of paper. You're not forced to use the piece of paper if you don't want to. Sometimes they blob it on the side of the actual code thing. I think I was Bioshock that did that. And I was kind of disappointed by it, because I would love to have remembered the code myself. Um, but there was there, there was some other games I played in the past where you just have to kind of think and remember the code yourself, and you can always go back and look at it and think of it again. Try to use your memory to kind of go forward in the in the game. Um, so so that's kind of nice. I also like the idea of this being on a ship, 
and only a ship for the most part. Uh, again, I wasn't too happy about the story, so uh, th th that was a bit meh. But the whole idea of it being on a ship and the Jill stuff, I loved the Jill stuff with Parker and Jill. That was awesome. I really enjoyed those. I didn't really enjoy, um, well, uh, Chris's stuff in the beginning until he bought it. No, no, his was mostly combat. I actually didn't enjoy his at all. I did enjoy, I did. I also didn't enjoy the two guys at the airport. I felt like that was a bit just filler content, pretty much. Chris's at least made so much sense because it was connected to Jill. But the other two guys were only connected to O'Brien. And, and while they were trying to help find the ships, uh, it just didn't seem like they really like mattered as a whole. Like one is smart, one can do computer stuff. Good for him. Uh, and he, he kind of found the other ships. But ultimately, you played as them three times, I think, and all you did was shoot things in all of those times. And then go over and click on information and stuff. Um, but yeah, that, that is pretty much it. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this Let's Play. Like I said, consider leaving a li uh, no, I mean, like... No, that's not what I'm going to say. <laughs> But do consider leaving a like, subscribing, and of course sharing. Uh, leave a comment saying your favorite part of the game, or if you disagree or agree with me, I would love to hear your opinions. And what games you'd like me to play next, that would also be nice to see. Um, but until then, uh, until I, I play one of those games, and until the next Let's Play you guys watch, I hope to see you and uh, in one of those. And as always, consider you know liking, subscribing, sharing. You guys stay awesome, and uh, hopefully see you in another Let's Play of mine.